This is Matador News. Good afternoon and welcome to Matador News. I'm Rochelle Salas. And I'm Lauren Turner Dunn. In a lengthy news conference, President Trump defended his former national security advisor pick, Mike Flynn. Flynn was asked to resign after it was disclosed that he was in contact with the Russian ambassador and discussed U.S. sanctions against the Russians. But Trump still defended Flynn. I said, I don't think he did anything wrong. If anything, he did something right. Trump also criticized the press out uh, out of control and says his administration is running like a fine-tuned machine. Students who don't know where their next meal is coming from have multiple options on campus. The Women's Resource Center provides food and toiletry items to students with a valid ID. Director Sheena Brown explains why they have the food pantry. 25% of all CSU students are food insecure, 10% are homeless. And so we knew that. We didn't know what the number was specifically, but we knew that students were hungry and we wanted to do more than just have a box of granola bars. The center is open Monday through Thursday, 9 in the morning to 6 in the evening on Friday. CSUN is offering a new mentoring program designed to help African-American female students. The program is called Wisdom and is focused on student success in academics and identity development. The program provides one-on-one mentorship with CSUN faculty members. Students will meet monthly with their mentors. Students interested in Wisdom should apply online before February 17th. Immigrants across the country are protesting today. President Trump's stance on immigration Many restaurants and businesses closed to stand in solidarity with immigrants. Walking off the job, the protests are a part of a social media movement called A Day Without Immigrants. Protesters hope to get Trump's attention. To let him know that we're not criminals, we workers. We support our country. More than 800 immigrants in Philadelphia are expected not to show up to work. Businesses will reopen tomorrow. Southern California is about to be hit by a powerful rainstorm, high surf, flooding, and strong winds are expected, and some Los Angeles areas will get up to six inches of rain. The downpour will begin overnight in the valley and could get three to five inches of rain by Friday. Downtown Los Angeles could get over four inches of rain. Mountain and foothill areas could have six to eight inches by Saturday. Low-lying coastal areas like Seal Beach are preparing for flooding. Officials say strong currents and waves could reach up to 13 feet. There is also a high chance of roadway flooding and falling trees due to powerful winds. More than 2,000 residents near the Oroville Dam have returned home. Origin caused a 200-foot hole in the dam's main spillway channel. That threatened to breach the spillway and flood towns below the dam. But state officials managed to reduce water levels. They are still keeping a close eye on the damaged spillway and massive repairs are underway. Immigrant right groups are upset over the arrest of Daniel Ramirez Medina, who is part of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Plan, or DACA. He was authorized to live and work in the United States under under DACA. His lawyer says that Ramirez is a law-abiding father, but federal immigration officials say he is a gang member, former gang member or potential gang member. His lawyer denies those charges. Police are looking for three suspects who kidnapped a three-month-old baby. The baby was found unharmed in her mother's car, which was also stolen. The mother had left her car running in the parking lot of a liquor store in South L.A. with her baby inside. When she returned, she saw someone riding off with her car. While police were creating an Amber Alert, the baby and the car were found nearby. A pedestrian was fatally struck by a vehicle on the 405 freeway this morning. According to California Highway Patrol, the person was struck and killed near Laguna Canyon Road. A SIG alert was issued at 6.30 this morning and an investigation is underway. Confirmation hearings for President Trump's Supreme Court pick, Neil Gorsuch, will begin on March 20th. Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Greasley made the announcement after consulting with top Democratic on on the committee, Dianne Feinstein. Grassley says he expects the last hearing to be three to four days. President Donald Trump is set to announce Alexander Acosta to head the Department of Labor. If confirmed, Acosta will be the first Hispanic in Trump's cabinet. Andy Putzer was Trump's first pick, but Putzer 
withdrew from consideration after struggling to gain traction for the nomination. Acosta was the member of the Na Nation National Labor Relations Board and served as Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General under former President George W. Bush. President Donald Trump welcomed Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu who, to the White House yesterday. Trump broke years of partisan U.S. by policy by not calling for a two-state solution in Israel-Palestine conflict. Netanyahu and his wife, agreed by Trump and the First Lady leader, Nagatu, said he looks forward to working with Trump. Under your leadership, I believe we can reverse the rising tide of radical Islam. And in this great task, as in so many others, Israel stands with you. And I stand with you. The meeting could stand with signal warmer relations with Israel. Trump backed off from his earlier stance of moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, and Trump and Nagatu are also expected to discuss Russia's role in the Middle East and ongoing peace process. President Trump is asking a New York billionaire to review American intelligence agencies. Trump has appointed co-founder and chief executive Cerberus Capital Management, Steve Feinberg. This is causing distress inside the intelligence agencies. Officials say Trump believes the intelligence community needs to be cleaned and changed. The U.S. military says the United States and its allies have killed an estimated 60,000 ISIS fighters. The U.S. alliance has stepped up airstrikes against ISIS. Meanwhile, Iraqi troops, ground, ground troops, continue their assault on ISIS strongholds, including the judicial city of Mosul. Now let's go to Kelsey Henderson with sports. Thanks, Lauren. Michigan State Police have requested warrants for three MSU football players. The university suspected, uh, suspended the students from all team activities and from student housing after allegations of sexual assault. The program's recruiting director was also suspended in connection with the incident. Um, the names of the three players have not yet been released. The NBA has announced that New York Knicks' Carmelo Anthony will replace Kevin Love in this year's All-Star Game. Anthony, the Knicks' small forward, beat out a number of NBA stars. Anthony, he got it. Love is the Cleveland Cavaliers' power forward. He is out six weeks due to knee injury. Earlier in the season, Carmelo and Love were both involved in trade talks for one, for, for one another. The CSUN men's basketball team lost to the Cal Poly Mustangs last night at the Matterdome, 85 to 71. The Matadors never led in the game despite scoring, but despite four players scoring up to four points in double digits. Uh, Kendall Smith and Aaron Parks both had a team high, 18 points. The hot shooting Mustangs had, uh, had scored, had five players scored at double digits and led by 30 at the one at one point. CSUN will face UCSD on the road next Thursday. And that's what's going on with news, sports news today. I'm Kelsey Henderson. Lauren Rochelle, back to you. Scientists have made advances in altering human DNA. The National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Medicine say they have taken the next step to modify human embryos. The Academies anticipate using the new technology to prevent serious diseases and disabilities. Doctors may be able to predict autism in babies before they turn one. About one in 68 children in the United States have autism. Researchers say they thought the earliest a child could be diagnosed with autism was at the age of two. But researchers now say that by running brain scans on babies, they can detect the, scan, the set of autism at a much earlier age. Now we go to Shelby Bracho with entertainment. The Guardians of the Galaxy attraction is set to open May 27th at Disney California Adventure. The new attraction involves visitors assisting Rocket Raccoon to rescue his friends. The ride is just a small part of the new Marvel makeover planned for this summer. It will take over the space where the Tower of Terror was located. Darren Chris is going from playing piano to playing a killer. The former Glee actor has a new role in the third season of the FX network show American Crime Story. Chris will play Andrew Kuninen, the man who killed fashion designer Gianni Versace 20 years ago. Chris is reuniting with Glee creator Ryan Murphy. American Crime Story will return with Darren Chris for its new season in 2018. 
Harry Potter actress Scarlett Byrne has posed nude for Playboy. Byrne played Perry Par Pansy Parkinson in The Half-Blood Prince and The Deathly Hollows Parts 1 and 2. Byrne says she is very proud to be featured in Playboy. And that's your entertainment today. I'm Shelby Bracho. Lauren Rochelle, back to you. The National Zoo in Washington is kicking off a series of events to say goodbye to a beloved panda. Bao Bao has since been born as a part of a long-standing agreement with China. Events include a dumpling party and painting activities. Zookeepers will also serve Bao Bao heart-shaped cakes. Bao Bao will fly nonstop from Duels, Virginia to, to China in a large crate plane named the FedEx Panda Express. Bao Bao is set to move to China next Tuesday. Thank you for watching Mad Dirt News. I'm Michelle Salas. And I'm Lauren Turner-Dunn. Have a great afternoon.